Hello everyone. Welcome to the learning screen tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this pixelated 3D head. Let's jump into Photoshop and check it out. Here we have already opened portrait. This is a fairly high resolution image. The first thing I'm going to do is take a lasso tool and I'm going to make sure I have the polygonal lasso tool selected. And before I start making a selection, I'm going to turn off this anti-aliasing checkbox. I want this to be a really blocky pixelated selection. So I'm going to start to click around the edges of the face here. And I'm holding the shift key while I do that. Shift is going to constrain the selection to just horizontal and vertical lines. And get this really blocky selection. What I'm doing is selecting as much of the face as I can. But making sure I never go off the edges. I don't want any of the hairline, I don't want any of the background. I just want that crazy extrusion effect to be limited to the face. So something like that. Alright then. I'm going to use the shortcut Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac to duplicate that selection to a new layer. By itself that layer looks like this. Alright, next I'm going to go up into the window menu and open the 3D panel. I'm also going to bring the properties panel. And I'm going to lump these two panels together because they kind of work in tandem with each other. And next, in the 3D panel I'm going to select this mesh from depth map option. In the drop down, I'll set it to plane. And hit create. Alright. Well that got us started in the 3D workspace. And automatically switched me to the pan tool, let's select the rotate tool. So I can click and drag to rotate around this strange object. What is this thing? Well that mesh from depth map option created a flat plane that has been displaced kind of forward and backward in space, based on the brightness of the image. So this might start to give you a very general sense of how this effect will work. Here I'm just going to get the camera position, a little bit more lined up, so the face is in the right place. Alright then, in the 3D panel I'm going to select this thing called depth map. This is the actual 3D object itself. And in the properties tab, I'll click where it says, edit source. And it opens up another document. When you create a 3D object in Photoshop it automatically creates kind of a smart object. And any changes I make to this file will actually change the 3D object in the scene. Now we will create a pixelated depth map here. So first thing I'll do is create a new layer. I'm going to take a marquee tool and drag out just a tiny little rectangle. And then I'm going to edit menu and then fill. And I'll set this to fill with 50% gray. Next, this little shape still selected, so press Ctrl D or Command D in Mac to deselect. Now I'm going to the filter menu and in the noise section use, add noise. Turn on the monochromatic checkbox. Uniform. Noise I'll set this to 30%. So those settings by the way give me the most even distribution of black and white and grey pixels. Then I'm going to change the opacity of this layer to about 50%. That's just temporary so I can see through it for a moment. I'm going to press Ctrl T or Command T to transform. And scale this way way up. So you can see why it was important to make such a small rectangle to get these really large blocks. I'm kind of eyeballing how large to make this pixelated shapes. Before I commit to this transform, there's an important thing here. Though I need to change the interpolation style up here. To nearest neighbor. That will keep this nice and blocky or pixelated when I hit enter or return to commit to that transformation. Alright let me bring the opacity of this back up to 100%. I'm also going to create a clipping mask by holding the Alt key on a PC, or Option key on a Mac. And clicking in between the two layers. So now we can really get a sense of this block face shape. I might even scale up this layer a little bit. And try to get rid of any of the tiny slices on the edges. I want this to be made up of just nice big blocks of geometry.
Alright, so here is our depth map ready, but before going further, I don't want any depth or displacement on the edges. So to fix that, I'm going back to this base layer. And then I'm going to the effects menu. And apply a stroke. Select color to pure black. Change the position to inside. And bring it up to maybe 10 pixels. That gives me this black outline around the whole thing. Alright I'm going to hit save here. And go back and take a look at what it's doing. So it's turning into a block head here. There's a little bug here sometimes when you update one of the source files. It kind of changes the position of the object and sends it all the way up here. So what I can do is, select the object. And go into the properties tab, and in the second little section here. This is the coordinate section. I'll click on reset coordinates. That'll move this object back to the center of the scene. Alright I'm gonna go ahead and line this up a little bit better. I prefer not to rotate the 3D object, but instead select the camera. And drag that around to line things up a little better. That way I'm not rotating the object. So if I want to adjust the position of the actual 3D object, by going and selecting to depth map, and now I can move my 3D object. And let's scale it up a little bit. Here I am trying to adjust the camera and object position by switching the selection between current view and depth map. If I can select Z axis handle, I can even scale it out in one direction. It's a little tricky to find that axis. And at the bottom of both the 3D panel and the properties panel, there's a little render button that I can hit to give that a quick test render. At any point you can hit escape and stop the render. Everything looks fine. As you can see in our actual photo, the key light is coming from this direction. So to match the light direction, I can always select this infinite light in the 3D panel. And drag that around to change the angle a little bit. And while I have the light selected, I'm going to bring the shadow softness up from 0 to all the way to 100. I think that will make it look a little bit more natural. Let's increase the light intensity a little bit. I actually want this 3D object to be a bit larger than the face. And that will give me some extra room to mask out the edges. And let's take a look at one more thing here. I'm getting some little artifacts in the shading, and the corners aren't quite looking like sharp edges. So there's a simple thing I can do that will clean this up quite a bit. But before to go to the next step, I'm going to save this document, because at least on my computer, this next step does crash Photoshop sometime. Alright with that saved, I'm going to select the depth map object, and in the 3D menu, I'm going to use Simplify Mesh. I'm going to set this mesh overlay checkbox on. So this object is actually made up of about 100,000 faces. And if I bring this simplify value way down, so this thing is maybe a 2000 faces. So what this simplify does here, is just removed that unnecessary faces. Hit OK. Alright I'm going to use the marquee tool. And just drag a selection around the areas I want rendered here. That will speed it up a little bit when I hit the button for a final render. Alright let's jump forward in time a little bit and let that finish. Rendered looks pretty nice. And even though that's a final render this is still a live 3D layer. Anything I do here will lose that render. So I can either right click and select rasterize 3D. Or a nice little trick I found is that, if you have any active selection with a marquee tool. I can just use Ctrl J or Command J to make a duplicate of that selection. And that will actually make a new layer with a flattened duplicate on it so I can turn off the live 3D layer. And I'll keep that just in case I want to come back and adjust it. But I think this render is a pretty good. Now all it's going to take is just a little bit of compositing to blend this pixelated block image with the face image. Select the 3D rendered image. Change the opacity down to 60% so I can see through it. I'll create a regular layer mask for the layer and use the brush tool with the color set black. 
and just kind of a soft brush and start to roughly mask out the edges. Alright let me bring the opacity of this layer back up to 100%. I want this side to be a little bit darker. So I'm also going to create a levels adjustment layer. Active layer mask, and I can just use the control I or command I to invert the mask. And use the brush tool with the color set to white and just paint in the areas where I want that level adjustment to give me some darker values. I want to make this layer as a clipping mask, so just right click and select create clipping mask option. Now I am going to create another level adjustment layer, and also create a clipping mask. And change the value of the level to make it even darker on these edges. Invert the layer mask and start painting. Alright well I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If so please do hit that like button, and be sure to check out Learning Screen channel for more cool stuff. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time.